These are the faces of the last of the Romanov line. Tsar Nicholas, Tsarina Alexandra and their children. Curator Sasha Smanova and her team have collected personal items that illustrate both their life and their death. Here are two decorative eggs designed by Carl Fabergé, both made of steel, which Tsar Nicholas gifted to his wife. One shows their daughters in Red Cross uniforms, the other their son studying maps belonging to the Russian army. This pharmacy chest contains dozens of medicines and is of particular interest to Smenova. This is an extraordinary object which um, hasn't been displayed before. Um, and it, um, as we know from the curators in Russia, it makes its first journey in 100 years. This is um, a traveling medical chest, one of the set of eight, um, which would have traveled with the Tsar and his family while he was on a number of trips across the vast empire of Russia. The exhibition also unveils that the Romanov's son and heir, Alexei, was stricken with haemophilia and that Tsarina Alexandra suffered from depression. The family's medical problems could have been one reason they were at the forefront of many scientific revolutions and not just political ones. Romanovs traditionally supported the development of science um, and we have another amazing object, object in the exhibition which are copies of the X-ray of the hands of the Tsarina and the Tsar made in 1898 by the Imperial doctor, Dr. Horn. Um, it was a groundbreaking technology back then um, and used just for a few years. Um, and Nicholas was so excited by, by these new discoveries. The last section of this extensive exhibit focuses on the Romanovs' final moments. The entire family was executed by Bolshevik authorities on the 17th of July, 1918. But for years, exactly what happened that night and where their bodies were buried remained unknown. The murder of the Romanov family was one of the greatest mysteries of the 20th century. In 1991, a group of bones was exhumed from a mass grave. And two years later, a Russian scientist, Pavel Ivanov, brought them to the UK, where they spent their first night wrapped in a plastic bag, stashed in the attic of forensic scientist Peter Gill. They were then taken to a laboratory, where they were matched against royal blood samples from relatives, including the UK's Prince Philip. The um, test came to conclusive results that this is the Romanov family um, and they have also laid foundations for the national DNA database which is still um, very much in use for solving various sorts of crimes. Tsar Nicholas II and his family were the last great imperial monarchs of Russia. Their lives were glittering and full of wealth, but in the end Despite being at the forefront of science and technology, the Romanovs became relics of a turbulent time in history, killed by the Bolsheviks in favor of a new era in socialism, the formation of what would eventually become the Soviet Union. This exhibition is a timely reminder of both their extraordinary lives and their gruesome deaths. Miranda Atty, TRT World, London. To find out more details about the mystery behind Russia's last royal dynasty, let's speak with author Helen Rappaport, who has penned several books on the royal family, including her last one titled The Race to Save the Romanovs. Thank you so much for joining us today, Helen. Now, a lot of light has been shed on the murder of the Romanovs, but little do we know about the rescue efforts. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, the problem with the whole issue of the Romanovs getting out of Russia in one way or another is there was a lot of confusion at the time, and there has since in the last hundred years um, been a lot of uh, a poorly referenced claims made about what did or didn't happen behind the scenes. It was a very difficult and confused time because the revolution had taken place and the Allies were still fighting a war. Um, but the immediate issue when Nicholas gave up the throne was to get him and the family to safety, obviously. And the logical uh, 
um, thing at that point was that one of the Allied governments with whom Russia had been fighting the war would offer asylum or a refuge. Now, you believe that uh, King George wasn't the only one that failed the Romanovs uh, uh, during rescue efforts. Who else uh, failed them? Well, in, in, in many ways, really, all their European royal relatives failed them because they were all, in various ways, pretty much descended from Queen Victoria. They were all closely related. I mean, uh, Russian, uh, the Russian royal family were very closely related to the Danish royal family. They had relatives in Sweden, in Norway, uh, even in Spain. In fact, it was the Spanish king who made more effort than any of the other monarchs or royal families to try and help them. So there really needs to be a sharing of responsibility in terms of failing the Romanovs. There were several governments that perhaps could and should have done more. Mm -hmm. Well, back then it was, uh, you know, the murder was done for political reasons by the Bolsheviks, but now it seems like it was just a mere brutal murder case that turned out to be, you know, the most biggest mystery of the 20th century? Well, I don't think it's a mystery per se in, in that we know they were all horribly, brutally, savagely murdered in July 1918. The problem is that the Bolsheviks never admitted to what they did. And for a long time, it was only really known for sure that Nicholas had been killed. And because there was all this doubt and confusion about what had happened to the rest of the family, what happened was the beginning of all kinds of conspiracy theories, false claimants springing up here, there and everywhere. And over the last hundred years, the rumours that one or other of the four grand duchesses got away and survived just persisted and persisted in the face of all the science, all the DNA testing. This is why the Anastasia myth, that legend, has has hung on so long. And, and there are denialists and conspiracy theorists still out there, despite all the science, mm -hmm. saying that Anastasia got away. That's the mystery, really. But as far as I'm concerned, as a historian, the scientific proof is incontrovertible. Mm -hmm. Now, Helen, uh, as I said earlier, you've done extensive, extensive research on this whole case and the Romanov family. What has been your most shocking discovery uh, about them? I'm not shocked about the Romanovs per se. In fact, I would say the thing that surprised me was when I really looked closely into the private domestic family life of the Romanov family, I was actually moved by the extent to which they were a very devoted, very loving and very loyal family. And as royal dynastic families go, they were very modest. They lived a very quiet and quite bourgeois life. And when the chips were down in captivity that last year and a half, their devotion to each other, their loyalty, loyalty to each other really shone through. And I ended up, whatever the failings of Nicholas and Alexandra's monarchs, I ended up really admiring them for the close-knit family life, the loving family life that they created for their children. Mm -hmm. Well, Helen, unfortunately, I'm going to have to end that there. But thank you so much for shedding more light on the mystery uh, of the Romanov murder. Thank you.